Good morning, Hank. How are you today? I'm uh, so so. <laughs> yeah. Tough weekend for me. I, I actually had a good uh, college day, and I uh, I haven't lost a baseball game yet. So wow! In the postseason, so I've been doing well with that. But uh, uh, the NFL wasn't kind to me. Well, you know, this is you and I've been around a long time. We've seen the ups and downs. It's for those people out there that are listening or just getting into it because we have more legalized betting. This is not a game where you're going to hit 70, 80 percent of your bets. You're not going to do it. And if you do it, you're not going to do it forever. You're just going to do it in temporary streaks. So you just have to really have good, strong money management. You have to have the perseverance to withstand some losing streaks. Hank, you and I know that, but the people out there don't always know that. Yeah, well, I had a couple of winners in football, but I had too many losers. So, you know, I had Philadelphia, which was good, uh, and I had Minnesota. Uh, both uh, turned out to be easy, and uh, and, I, and I actually had a teaser that came in, but uh, which I never play, but I... Uh, but I did that with those two teams. But uh, I'll tell you, there was uh, some games that uh, really mystified me a little bit. Um, but I'm not uh, going to look back. But uh, the, the game that's really surprised me, but I'll tell you what happened in terms of uh, the game in London. And that is, I, I, give, um, I, I give Gruden a lot of credit. He took the team over there early in the week and did all the work over there. Whereas I thought that Chicago going over there on Thursday night was a big mistake. You can't do that and have your team ready to play. You know, there's a jet lag situation that comes up. And uh, I, I found them following that game and having been over there myself covering games that you can't just show up. Uh, you know, 48 hours before the kickoff and expect your team to be ready. I it just doesn't happen. I 100% agree. When I when I heard, I was very upset because I already had Chicago. It was the only loser I had all week in the pros. But I, I had Chicago. I'm, I'm mystified by, <laughs> I mean, I was wrong about the Raiders. I thought the Raiders were going to be really a shit show this year. And they're 3-2 and two on the season and and they got stuff rolling there. I mean, they they look like they're really fluid. They have some characters on the team, some bad guys, maybe Burfix out, you know, Incognito's a mess. But, uh, you know, they're, they're playing a lot better than I ever gave them credit for. I was wrong about them. And, um, and last night I was really surprised how, but we all thought Indianapolis was a good team going into the season, but we had Andrew Luck there. We didn't know what we had. They have a they have a solid club. I I was shocked at how they handled KC. Well, I was too because of the way they played the week before, uh, where they did not play well. The quarterback didn't play well the week before, but they had a great game plan against Kansas City. They just ran the ball down their throats, and uh, you know they ran for a couple hundred yards against them and just uh, plowed into them. And of course, um, you know Kansas City's. Uh, quarterback, and I don't blame the foot injury. He started off playing poorly, uh, but uh, and their, their receivers are all beat up, so he doesn't have a lot of great targets like he normally has. They got to get healthy in the receiver area, uh, but and uh, they dropped a few balls. Uh, but for them to be get beat like that at home uh, was pretty surprising to me, and. Uh, I don't think too many people foresaw that coming. Uh, uh, I, I didn't play that game, uh, so it, it didn't bother me one way or another. But but I thought that I thought the number was a little bit high, and I wasn't going to take Indianapolis after the way they played the week before. The game that really uh, surprised me was Dallas and how soft they were, and how poorly the quarterback played. You know he. Threw for a lot of yardage, but it was all meaningless because he threw it. He actually should have had five picks in the game. Two of them were called back, but he had three picks in the game, and they were so far behind early. Uh, you know, Green Bay came out and uh, they ran all over him, 
and uh, they were playing from behind, and they so they that took uh, Zeke out of the game, and so their great strength I thought was going to be them running a game, running the ball against Green Bay, which came in as one of the poorest run defenses in the league, and uh, that never showed up, and so Green Bay came in and their defense just took the game over early. And uh, while Dallas uh, started to come back in the second half, as Green Bay, as usual, uh, did not play well in the second half and had a bad third quarter, uh, you know, Dallas had too much ground to make up. So, uh, but, and, and, you know, turned it into a closer game than it actually was. So that, that uh, I, I, you know, Dallas was supposed to be so good, and right now, They've lost a couple of games in a row, and their wins were against lousy teams. That's they're starting to wonder about Dallas and and where they're going right now. Well, one of, you you just hit on a subject I do want to bring up. Right now, we don't have a lot of parity in the in the NFL from a top to bottom perspective. We do have parity at the top, and we do have parity at the bottom. But when the top plays the bottom. You can't give too much credit if the top team looks really good because they're playing such a bad team. Like, for example, Dallas started out against Washington Giants and Miami. Well, everybody should look good against those guys. Even the ball, even Baltimore put up a 59 uh, against Miami. These teams are so bad that they, they're better than college teams. I'm not going to say they're not, but they are so bad when it comes to measuring them against average or even or good um, and great uh, NFL teams. So when a team is building up their resume against bad clubs in the NFL, you have to discount a lot of what they showed. And Dallas did that in the beginning of the season. Then they went to uh, New Orleans, and the New Orleans defense shut them down. And then yesterday the Green Bay defense shut them down. Yeah, but the New Orleans game could have gone either way. And, uh, and New Orleans has proven to be one of the better teams now because – and I'll tell you, New Orleans played a great game uh, against uh, Jacksonville in that he coached a heck of a game and really outcoached uh, the defensive uh, the Tampa Bay. Uh, game plan for, t- uh, for Tampa Bay. Uh, I said Jacksonville, I meant Tampa Bay. Uh, but uh, because uh, all, all of uh, all, all of uh, their offense had been based on a uh, very conservative game planning. And in this game, uh, he threw the ball deep and uh, killed him with deep pass. All He threw three touchdown passes that were all over the top. Bridgewater. Which is something he, Bridgewater hadn't done all year. Well, the guy hadn't. And, uh, the- and, and by the way, uh, Tampa Bay never made an adjustment in the second half. The uh, you know Bridgewater hadn't played very much in the last couple of years after that devastating injury that he had, but he was really good before he got hurt, and he looks like he's really good now. And he, he every game he's now played, he played some good teams. He went up to Seattle. They conservative game plan. They won that. Then they won the game against Dallas, and now they won an up uh, up tempo game, um, high scoring game against uh, Tampa Bay. So. This team is very solid. I, pre- you know, in the beginning, I predicted the Saints to go to the Super Bowl from the NFC. I, when Breeze got hurt, I didn't know what I was going to get out of that. But it seems like it's working out. And Breeze, it's going to be. Boy, I tell you what, that's going to be tough. Breeze is going to get healthy, and they're going to bring him back. And you got a guy that's playing like this. This is. Uh, it's amazing. That's a. That's a problem when you have so much talent at a position like that. But uh, there's other teams. Look at what happened to Pittsburgh. They lose Roethlisberger. They lose the kid. I hope he's okay. Um, he got a terrible hit. It was scary. And then they bring in the third guy, and he didn't look so bad. They played hard. It was a tough game. They they they, they would have won that game if Rudolph didn't get hurt. Well, I I thought so too. But they might have won the game if uh, uh, Juju Smith didn't. Uh, have that ball taken away. It was a great defensive play that did that, but I don't blame the receiver. It just happens. But it was. Yeah, but Jackson is turning out to be uh, not that great no, right now. He is not that great. 
He is he is he is a great talent. He's a he's a great athlete, but he does not look like a quarterback to me. He just doesn't seem to have the accuracy. Throws picks all the time. Poor decisions. I you know that. Hey Hank, that that NFC or AFC uh, North is a mess. I mean Cleveland. Uh, even though Cleveland, you know, we criticized a lot of what Cleveland is doing. Gosh, they might be the best team in that division. Uh, yeah, well, Pittsburgh, uh, that was a tough beat for Pittsburgh. Sure was. And uh, I hope Rudolph comes back because their defense is playing pretty well right now. And um, and uh, Baltimore, uh, you know, Baltimore, I think, is uh, probably going to be uh, the team that comes out on top because of their defense. But I don't know. We'll see. I think you could be right on that one. Uh, Hank, uh, but, this, uh, mo- this morning, uh, Jay Gruden got fired. I wasn't surprised. Yeah. About- I know you weren't surprised about that. No, I told you where he's going. He's going to wind <laughs> up with the Raiders. Well, yeah, the two brothers working together. It, it it would seem to me like Dan Quinn would be right right behind him. He's he's done a terrible job. Yeah, they're, they're just a bad team. Uh and uh, all of that coach uh, doesn't uh, doesn't do anything in a hurry uh, with Atlanta or their owner, rather. But uh, yeah, true. they got they they got uh, beaten badly again this past week, and they have no defense whatsoever. And uh, I'll tell you, there's a good uh, matchup this week with uh, Detroit. We'll see how good they are. Uh, and um, you know, Minnesota. Uh, handled the Giants without any trouble. Yeah. And by the way, I had I won the Pittsburgh game by half a point. So, so did I. I, yeah. I, I, I. But these weren't games I picked uh, publicly. I only had uh, one winner of the games I picked publicly, and that was Philadelphia. So, uh, but you know, betting wise, I had the winners. But yeah, well, uh, but I had more losers than winners. Well, you know, it's a it's a the beginning of a new week. And we start off tonight. We've got baseball. We've got hockey. We've got WNBA this week. We've got the baseball or football game tonight. We've got Thursday night. All you know, you start over. It's just you pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and I think there was a song that said those words. But um, and much better than I can do it. But uh, that's what that's we'll do. We'll just we'll just keep going. I had you know I had a great week, but. You know, thing it, it breaks like that. I can remember a couple of years ago when you were smoking hot, and I wasn't. And it, it just it goes like that. You just go in streaks. And when you when you, you get the breaks and you, you see things clearly, it it just works. And other times it doesn't. Well, people out there re- got to realize that if you can hit six out of ten games over a long period of time, you're doing damn good. And um, anybody that's telling you that that over a long period of time they do seventy eighty percent is is not telling you the truth. Now you can do that in a short run, but you can you can also hit thirty percent in a short run, and uh, you just have to keep you keep good money management. Don't bet too much. Stay within a three to five percent of your bankroll uh, ratio, on, and so you don't blow all your money on a bad week, and and you can grind out a profit each year. Hank and I've been doing this like fifty years each, and. Um, <clears throat> You know, and we've made a living doing it. So, Hank, uh, you have a great week. We'll talk soon. We'll talk Wednesday. Um, anything else you want to add before we sign off? Uh, no. Uh, I think uh, tonight's game will we'll, uh, find out a little more about uh, Cleveland. Uh, they're going to face a well-rested San Francisco team that's one of only two undefeated teams that are remaining. Um I didn't think that uh, New England played that great for a while against Washington. Washington actually played them pretty tough for most of the first half. Uh, but uh, we'll see who's going to get that Washington job. They've got a couple of good young assistants there, uh, although they gave the veteran offensive line coach uh, a temporary job. And, uh, you know, we'll find out. It just, I don't think too many coaches are going to lose their jobs during the during the course of the season. 
I think I think some of the ownership issues in in the league, and I think this goes for all sports. If you have an owner that isn't really that good at not about making money, because obviously they've been able to make a lot of money, but about managing a sports team and they make too many decisions and they interfere and they don't allow the football people to make decisions and they make bad hires of coaches. Those kind of guys are the cause of these teams being poor. And um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to name names because I don't want to get in trouble, (laughs) but there's, there's a lot of bad coaches, a lot of bad owners out there that are causing these teams to lose. So anyway, we'll sign Buffalo, off. Buffalo, by the way, came back strong yes this week against uh, Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee is very inconsistent. Their quarterback is uh, the problem there, and uh, Buffalo held them to one score. Um, and uh, when I saw the Buffalo had their quarterback, uh, I did play them. I actually didn't lose a lot of money. It was just on my uh, in the contest where I had already put in stuff. Uh, that I that I didn't do well, um, so uh, you know I I, uh, I I think I put my contest picks in too early. That was my problem. Well, that's one of the reasons I don't do the contest because it locks me in, and I I'm I'm mostly you know I'm not really into contests. I'm just into betting, and um, I bet early, and I bet through, during the week, and I bet late, and I'm taking always taking. The best of the number. I bet a lot of numbers, and and um, it, yep, the contests are too restrictive for me. And plus, I play a lot of totals, and uh, none of the contests allow you to play totals. So uh, I'm just not into it. So that's why I passed it the last couple of years. But that's just me. <laughs> They're exciting. People love them. Anyway, Hank, we'll talk Wednesday. All right, Jim. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody. Make sure you go to the website, jimfeist.com, for my picks and Hanks, and sign up for the free play each and every day. Just go to jimfeist.com, and thank you for listening.